Hi, back again. I wasn't sure that it was on yet. I'm going to stand up straight this time because last time I looked all hunched over. This is my cell phone. It's a very old looking thing. And this cell phone takes us back to the frogs that we talked about just a moment ago, or I talked about, and you had to endure it. Imagine that you're at the frog bar with your fellow frogs, and um, you're talking about how the day's events went. And the way it went was like one frog talks to the other and says, hey, did you see all those little ones? It was awesome. We ate like pigs today. Yeah, we did. Well, Chris, they wouldn't know what a pig was. But then the frog was saying, oh, boy, it was really good eating all those little ones. And then the other frog would say, did you see Henry? No, I haven't seen Henry anywhere. I guess he didn't see that big one was because Henry got eaten. And then you'd hear, oop, oop, and that means, oh, my God, there's girl frogs out there. Let's go chase the girl frogs. So the frogs think that that's all there is. And I want you to look at this cell phone. I know it's hard to believe that that is a cell phone, but it is. Um, that cell phone only works because electromagnetic energy goes into it, and electromagnetic energy comes out of it, and you can't see that energy. And electromagnetic energy is the same thing as color. And this, again, is a problem of epistemology. Do you know if this phone has any colors coming off it? Of course, you can't see them, but you can see red, yellow, green, blue. Is it Roy G. Biv? Except we have a funny way that we talk about that a lot like the frogs. We have names for colors that are fake. For example, you get red, and then you get really red. Then you get so goddamn red you can't even believe it red. And what do we call that? Infrared. That's like so red. Oh, my God, right? So then there's another thing. You go red, yellow, violet, really, really violet. So damn violet you can't believe it violet. What do we call that? Ultraviolet. But you know, of course, that infrared and ultraviolet are not red and not violet. They're what's making this crazy phone work. So we think we know what we see, but we only can see what our eyeballs give us. So in other words, the energy comes into your eye, boing, it goes into your brain, ding, whatever that means, and then you come to a conclusion that I see red, green, yellow, and blue, and so forth. So that ends our problem with metaphysics. Let's move to the next one of the five branches, which I couldn't remember, and that is aesthetics. Oh my. So aesthetics is a funny one. I think it's actually the most important because people die for what they think is beautiful. Aesthetics is the study of art and beauty. Now, if any of you have seen works of art, you know that there's a lot of really not beautiful art in the world, and yet it's still art. So let me tell you about an interesting work of art done by this guy by the name of Duchamp. Oh, yes, Duchamp. Well, Duchamp was a member of an art school called the Dadaists. It sounds sort of odd because they are. And Dada was the idea that anything can be art. And so Duchamp one day was making the point that you don't even have to make your own artwork for it to be art. So he went to a hardware store and he bought a urinal and he called it Fountain. And he put a little paint on it and he put it in a museum. And people said, oh my gosh, Duchamp, that's brilliant. It's a urinal. You bought it in a store and you put it in an art museum. Was it art? Well, it was art. Was it good art? In fact, it is good art. Could you do it? No. Only Duchamp could have done it. Only one time. And so the question is, what was Duchamp trying to tell us? He was going to say, though he didn't say it because he's an artist, they never let you know what they're thinking. They have to let you guess it, I guess. The point of his art was the art world, the people that talk about art, is what makes art art. And so pretty pictures are not art. It's not even the artist that makes art. It's all the people in the museums that turn art into art. So that's an odd thing. That would mean that if you sit there in Penn Highlands and draw beautiful pictures, they aren't art not unless people in the art world are talking about them. So my question is, if you walk into a museum and you write in your chest, I am art, and you just walk around, will they throw you out? Because now you've put yourself in the museum. Have you then become art? I don't know. Anyway, try it. And if you get arrested, report back. So that's aesthetics, beauty and art. Um, there's a problem with aesthetics. Is anything beautiful just because you think it is? Like if I think a bag of baby poop is beautiful, is it beautiful, or am I mistaken? Now, we'll get to that when we get to, when we get to ethics, actually. So there's art and aesthetics, beauty and art. What are these about? Next, politics. Ah, yes, politics. Politics is ultimately everything, because if it's not politics, it doesn't matter, because politics has to do with who makes decisions about your life. Um, there's a great politi political philosopher, and his name is Machiavelli. And Machiavelli asks the question, what is better? Is it better to be loved or is it better to be feared if you're a political leader? 
What is better, better to be loved or feared? And he says, well, of course, since people are egoistic, self-centered, and all they care about is what's in their best interest, it's much better to be feared. Because love, as you all know, is fickle. Somebody loves you, then they don't love you. You love them, then you don't love them. And political figures cannot rely on something as ambiguous as love. But if you know that I'm going to kill you, then you'll do what you're supposed to do. And that's what Machiavelli ultimately says, that the best political leaders are those who can evoke fear and respect from their populations. So that's a political problem. Finally, we're going to talk about ethics. But um, let me just say ethics is like the various branches of philosophy itself broken into a series of different kinds of things called meta-ethical principles. And that's what we're going to look at. So I have a few seconds here. Let me ask you about this. Do you think that anything is good if people think it's good? It's called relativism. Most Americans are mistaken. They believe that the world is made of whatever people think is good is good. There's this guy by the name of Protagoras, for example. And Protagoras says, any opinion is as good as any other. Well, that's a very strange thing to say because what he's saying is that that opinion is true, which means he doesn't really think that any opinion is as good as any other because he thinks his opinion that any opinion is as good as any other is the right opinion and I think that's wrong so we'll be back again in a minute and if I can figure out how to turn this off that would be really great